Okay, this is so exciting. It's uh, December the 12th, and it's time to work on the heel of our Christmas stocking. <clears throat> I have all my materials uh, that I need for this project. So the ball of yarn that you received in uh, your package. You've got the uh, Addy uh, double-pointed needles from the day before. And um, I just have to say how smooth these needles are. I'm really excited to use them. Um, so we're about to do the heel and it's a German short row heel so if you haven't done it before I thought it might be helpful to do it together. Before you get started let me just recap on all the steps we've taken so far. So you've done your topper, you've done your leg, I'm going to take a final measurement here and I'm doing the color work stocking so I'm looking for 13 inches on my stocking. If you were doing the shadow knit version of the stocking you would be looking for 12 inches from the top of your stocking to uh, where you where you finished. Um, I have my balls of yarn from the knitting that I've been doing so far and the instructions say not to cut them. What I did do though was uh, wind off a section of my white so it was about the same size as my gray uh, because then it will fit inside my stocking a little bit better. We also uh, told you that if you wanted to um, tuck your balls of yarn inside your stocking to use them later, there we go, it would be helpful if they don't fall out of the bottom end. So you can close off the bottom end with some locking stitch markers, just about three of them across here will uh, make sure that, even two maybe, would uh, make it so that those balls of yarn don't fall through the bottom of your stocking. I've taken a little bit of uh, waste, waste yarn, or um, we call it waste yarn, although uh, no yarn ever goes to waste, right? <laughs> this is a little bit of cord that I keep in my Notions tin, and I've just taken a wool needle and woven it through to close off the bottom of the stocking so that nothing falls through. Up here, at the top of your stocking, <clears throat> remember that you're going to finish your stocking 18 stitches before the beginning of the round, and I'm going to count here to make sure that I've done that. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. There's my progress keeper that I put on before. I have one more stitch to do, and then I will be 18 stitches before the beginning of the round marker. So I'm just going to do my last stitch here and I don't have my chart here in front of me but I have my marker here so if I just go back to my previous marker I can see that the first few stitches were two light, one black, two light, two black. So over here two light, one black, two light, one black. Okay, I can take my progress keeper off now and we're going to start using the new color that you received in your package for your heel yarn. Um, I put my um, put the tip of my heel yarn on uh, on a wool needle because uh, one of the things that is kind of helpful is to anchor it a little bit over here. You're going to find that the tail um, that this first stitch that you do wants to come loose. So what I'm going to do is take my wool needle and just uh, kind of skim through a few stitches along the back here. It might show up on the front, that's okay. It's it, The intention is just to anchor it a little bit. It's gonna go up like this, which one is the tail here? And then just skim a few stitches in the back like that. Okay, I'll take my, take my wool needle off, and I'm not a fan of long tail, so I'm just going to shorten that a bit. Okay, later on I will pull this out, so I'm going to leave it nice and apparent where it is. Okay, I'll pull that out, but for now it just gives me a little bit of an anchor so that when I start to use that green yarn it's not uh, it's not pulling free on the top of my stitch. Okay, so um, the instructions say you want to have your, again, your four millimeter double pointed needles, your 50 gram ball of the heel color that you received in your package today, 
Let's get these out over here and your instructions. All right, so we're going to use the double pointed needles to knit 36 stitches onto two DPNs. We'll knit 18 stitches before the marker and 18 stitches after the marker. And that's just going to be a regular knit. Now you don't have to transfer your stitches onto your double pointed needles. Just pull the right end of your circular needle free so that it's out of the way. Pick up your uh, new uh, Addy double pointed bamboo needle and knit 36 stitches. Oh yeah, one more thing is that before you do this, take the time to write down which row or which round you are on in the leg chart so that when we're finished the heel you can go back to it. Okay, I'm going to take my little beginning of the round marker off, pick up a second double pointed needle and knit 18 more stitches. Because of my pattern, I happen to have a marker there as well, so I'm going to take that off too for now. Okay, so I've got my 36 stitches on two double pointed needles. I'm going to pull this circular needle. It's just so that the ends are dangling free, so this will hold the top half of the stocking while we work on the heel. Uh, now you're going to turn your work so that you have the wrong side of your work facing and pick up another double pointed needle and with your yarn in front so in front of your double pointed needle we're going to slip the first stitch off the left hand needle onto the right hand needle and we're going to bring the yarn all the way around to the front like this to create what's called a double stitch. So you see how the bottom of that stitch that we slipped is sitting on the needles like that. It looks like two stitches, but it's not, it's just one. But the top of the stitch has been smushed up and uh, let all we get left with is this appearance of a double stitch. Now you purl back across the first DPN and then across the next DPN. Uh, 34 stitches. So you'll have one stitch left at the end of the row that you're going to leave unworked. When you get to the end of the first DPN, just take the needle that you released, put it in your right hand, Keep the yarn in the front because we're purling and work back. After I knit the first stitch on a new double pointed needle and I'm about to knit the second one, I give that first one a good tug. That's to prevent any kind of loose stitches between my double pointed needles and to ensure that I don't get um, what looks like a run between my needles. You might have other tricks and that's just fine. All right, I'm at the end of the second needle. I work until there's one stitch remaining and then turn your work. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip the first stitch off the left hand needle. Take your yarn into the working position. So this, this time because we're knitting, we're going to pull the yarn across to the back. Again, we wanna we want, to we want to make the top of the stitch as small as possible. So pull that yarn into the back until you see the bottom of the stitch. So this is called a double stitch. And we're doing an MDS, make a double stitch. Then knit the next stitches back across the length of your heel until you are 
right beside the last double stitch you made. Uh, the nice thing about doing a German short row heel is that you're, um, it's, it's very regular and um, you don't need to wrap stitches, which is kind of nice. You don't need to mark them. Um, it's pretty evident what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to knit this last stitch before my last double stitch. Then you will turn your work. With the yarn in front, you slip the next stitch from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Then bring the yarn over the back of the needle and around to the front because we're going to purl. So if you see in the, in the pattern instructions that we gave you, there's a little box with uh, Suzanne's German short row steps. Uh, uh, thank you and shout out to Suzanne A. He's one of our instructors. Uh, she wrote this down and I find it so helpful when I'm trying to remember how to do German short rows. Um, so she'll, she says, you know, always work to the turning point and the turning point is the last stitch before your last double stitch. Uh, turn your work, then uh, make a double stitch. So bring the yarn to the front if it isn't already there. Slip this, the, the next stitch purlwise from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Take the working yarn over the top of the right hand needle. Tug on the yarn to create the double stitch and then position the yarn to work the next stitch. Okay, here I am again. You can see that double stitch right there on my left hand needle. I'm going to work the last stitch in front of it. Then turn your work. Bring your yarn to the front. Slip the next stitch off the left hand needle, pull that yarn to the back, and because we're knitting this time, the yarn stays in the back, and knit the next stitch. Now, I haven't been counting my rows, so how do I know when I'm ready to stop? Um, so you can see that I've got on the right hand side here, with the right hand side facing me, I've got two double stitches here. And over here on the left hand side, I have two double stitches over here. Um, so I'm going to continue working this pattern until I have 10 double stitches on the left side and nine double stitches on the right side. So I'll show you one more uh, turn on this side and then I'm going to uh, let you go ahead and make your double stitches and I'll um, come back and meet you at the point where we start to do something different. So here is my last double stitch and you know don't worry about going too far because if you try to enter this stitch to knit it it just feels weird. Um, so now I turn my work Yarn's already in front, so slip the next stitch over to the right hand needle. And because I'm on a purl row, bring that yarn all the way over and purl the next stitch. Okay, I'll meet you when I have 10 double stitches on the left side and 9 double stitches on the right. I'm just working my way, um, <clears throat> excuse me, across the last couple of rows of the um, double stitch, the first half of the heel. And I just wanted to show you what to watch out for when you're counting your double stitches. So on the right hand side, you see I'm halfway across the row here, or more than halfway. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine double stitches on the right side. And I have two, four, six, eight, nine double stitches on the left side, and I want ten double stitches on the left side, according to the pattern. So I'm going to do one more over here, slip my stitch over, bring my yarn around, and work back. So on this return row, 
uh, because I've counted, I know I've got 10 double stitches on one side, 9 double stitches on the other, and you just need to complete one, complete this wrong side row before we go on to the next part. And there's my one stitch before the last double stitch. Turn it around, and again, I'm just going to show you here that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, double stitches on the right hand side, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten double stitches on the left hand side. So I'm ready to begin the next set of instructions. Um, it's not a bad time to just take a look at your heel and see this kind of beautiful wedge shape that you're making. So the heel is starting to come into, into shape now, but it'll become even more apparent as we work the next part. So you can turn your page. And now we're going to begin working back and working the double stitches um, working the double stitches as we go. So I am here. Um, so we're going to make one more double stitch. So uh, bring your yarn to the front, slip the next stitch over, pull your yarn to the back, and knit to the double stitch on this side. Okay, so MDS means make double stitch. And then when you get to the next double stitch on this side, we're going to knit it. We're going to do a KDS. So you slip your needle into both strands of that uh, double stitch. So again, I'll just take my needle out and show you. I go through here and you should see that there are two strands kind of on the underside of your needle. So knit that double stitch as one stitch. And then you're going to knit the next double stitch as well. So slip your needle into the next one and knit it. And then you're going to turn your work. <clears throat> and we're going to make a double stitch at the beginning of the row. So slip the stitch over. Take your yarn around to the back and it's going to feel really big and clunky, but don't worry about it. We'll get rid of that in a second. Purl your way back to the next double stitch on the purl side. Okay, and when you get to the double stitch on the purl side, uh, you're going to purl that double stitch, PDS, so put your uh, needle into both strands of it, purl it, then purl the next one, turn your work, start off the round by making a double stitch, so bring your yarn to the front, slip the first stitch, pull it to the back, Knit the next stitch. And I find that, you know, the tighter that you can do these uh, double stitches, the better. So you may find that um, in order to get into the stitch, you need to push it up onto the tapered end of your double pointed needles. Again, I'm, uh, I'm knitting on these DPNs and I'm just thinking about how smooth and sharp they are. So good work, Addie. I love these. Okay, here's my next double stitch on this side. So I'm going to knit it. And again, you know, if you find it hard to get into that stitch, just push it up onto the taper, hold it in place with your finger and knit it. Slide the next one up and knit it because we always work two double stitches before you turn and then make a double stitch. So slide it over 
pull it around and purl back to your next double stitch. Okay, so you're going to work each subsequent row and they'll get, these short rows will get longer and longer, but work each subsequent row by knitting or purling two double stitches, then turn your work and uh, make a double stitch and work back to the next set of double stitches. So each time you complete a round, a row, sorry, you will have worked in, back into your fabric one stitch further into your heel. That's a single stitch there, so purl it. Here's my big clunky double stitch, purl it. Here's my next one, purl it. Turn and work back. Okay, so you're going to work back and forth until you have, uh, with the right side facing, until you have one double stitch on the left end of your work. Are you ready? I'll meet you at that point. And here we are just finishing up the heel section. So I'm working my way on my last knit round. Here are the two double stitches at the end. So I'm going to knit one and I'm going to knit this one which is in my other color. I'm going to turn my work. Okay, and at the end of this row I still make one double stitch. So slip your needle into the stitch with the yarn in front, pull it around and work your way back. So I'm going to purl across this row. When I get to the end of this purl row, there will be two double stitches at the end, which I will knit. And then I'm going to put my yarn down and take a break. Um, so that, that will be, and take a break and admire my heel. All right, so there's the two double stitches here. Knit this one, or purl, sorry, purl this one. I've got one stitch left here, so I'm just going to purl it and turn. And as you can see, I have no double stitches on this side, and there's one double stitch on this side. We'll deal with that in the next segment, but now you get a chance to have a look at your heel. There it is perfectly shaped little pocket for the back of the heel or for some cute little treasures in your Christmas stocking. Okay, I'm going to put this down now and uh, make myself maybe a cup of hot chocolate and I'll be back to join you for the next section in a couple of days.